Sometimes I check out movies because I really want to see them. And sometimes I do a review even though I know most of you are never going to see this movie. This is one of those occasions. Let's go through our checkboxes. French, subtitles, art, female driven, passes the Bechdel test. Mm. A lot of you are not gonna be interested and you've already tuned out, but that's completely all right. Some movies aren't for everyone and some movies are for very few. This may be one of those. This week we're gonna be talking about A Portrait of a Lady on Fire on the Everyman Movie Review. So right from the jump, let's go ahead and roll through the pleasantries, shall we? Portrait of a Lady on Fire was directed by Céline Sciamma. It was also written by Céline Sciamma. It is a French film, so God forgive me, I'm gonna butcher the pronunciations of most of these names. But here we go. It is starring Noemi Merlin as Marianne, Adèle Enel as Eloise, Luana Bajrami as Sophie, Valeria Golino as La Comtesse, and a supporting cast of people with even more difficult names, so I'm not even gonna try. Uh, I also know that I probably got it sounding a little Italian or Spanish in that, forgiveness, I don't speak French, I just do my best. And the fact that most of you have tuned out already means, hey guys, welcome to all of you who like the same kind of films I do. So, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Um, I really enjoyed this, uh, to say, um, I sometimes like pretentious French film. I say pretentious French film because I think that's what most people would say about it, but I just really enjoy foreign film. I think it gives us a different perspective. One of the reasons I liked Parasite so much, we talked about Snowpiercer on the last episode, Bong Joon-ho's first, or one of his first offerings. Uh, I like foreign film, uh, Parasite, A Portrait of a Lady on Fire, because they have a different perspective on the world and they have different rules by which their cinema lives. and it's kind of weird to throw out everything that you think you know and what to expect and just open yourself up to whatever experience you're gonna get. And Portrait of a Lady on Fire was that. Um, it was definitely a slow movie. It built in very weird ways that I didn't anticipate. It sometimes seemed to jump forward and a lot of things happen in short periods of time, which we don't really do for American audiences. We like to just say, hey, okay, here's A, got A, sure you got A, here's A again. Cool, here's B, check out B, got B, are you sure you got B? All right, reminder, here's what A is. Okay, here's B again, now here's C, show you B, show you C, here was A, A, B, and C are all together. It's a way to spoon feed people cinema, and I'm not gonna say it's for dumb people, but it's for more entertainment value than it is for making things complex and making film something that's more literary. And sometimes film from other countries will just say, forget about that. We're going to make a literary type experience in a visual media, and that's what French film tends to be known as. And Portrait of a Lady on Fire is essentially that. It is, let's imagine we had a very classic book that this is it, and we're gonna make a film of it, and we're gonna be true to the true material, the original source material. But essentially, uh, a, a woman who is a relatively well-known painter, I suppose, she is the daughter of a famous painter. Uh, we open with her, and she's teaching a class to a bunch of other women who are also painters, or they want to be painters, I suppose. But nonetheless, one of them finds a painting in the back and brings it out because she has questions about it. And when the teacher notices it, she throws her off her game and she asks who brings it out. And they said, hey, it was me. And I just wanted to know what was the story with this. And she says, well, it's called Portrait of a Lady on Fire. And pff, now we're in the story, right? And it's her on a boat and she's going to this island in Brittany, end of the 18th century. So uh, very much a period piece, very much a period piece. And uh, what we learn over the first act of the movie is that there uh, was a daughter of a very rich landowner in Fa France, uh, the Brittany portion of France. And I know this is probably confusing for people who don't know the difference, but the northeastern region of France, the area that we invaded on World War II, if you know anything about history. Um, this was also the area where the Brits originate from because William uh, the Conqueror came from Brittany, which is in northeastern France, and invaded the island in 1066, and that's why we have Britain. This is an area of France. Uh, and there was an island just off the coast, and uh, it's owned by this very wealthy landowner, and he had two daughters, one of which went into, the, uh, into a nunnery, and uh, the other was preparing to be married off. And that one uh, suddenly died uh, because either she jumped or slipped from a cliff. 
So the other daughter was called home from the nunnery to be sent to Milan, uh, it's Milan, Italy, to be married off to someone wealthy to help the family finances and the family family esteem. Well, once uh, the first daughter died and the second daughter was back, uh, it was a painting was commissioned so that they could send it to uh, the Duke, I think it was a Duke, in Milan uh, in order for him to approve the marriage uh, to the younger daughter. And again, for those of you who may not be uh, so familiar with the way that things worked in history, this happened an awful lot. Uh, it was way cheaper for us to commission a painting, have a painting done, and then send that painting off to someone to approve a marriage uh, of someone who's not met, but yet not sight unseen in a way, than it was uh, to have the person actually taken there just to be rejected, uh, and obviously less dangerous to travel in those days as well. So, you know, this is just something that happened relatively often. In fact, uh, La Comtesse says that, hey, this is how I actually married my husband, is that I had a painting made of me, and that was very beautiful. And, uh, oh, painter, you're... Your father is the one who did the painting of me, which is why I thought of you in these circumstances. This is a long explanation of very short intro of the movie. Uh, what we learn essentially after that is that the younger daughter, the one who's been called back from the nunnery, uh, did not allow the previous painter to finish his work. She would not sit for him, she would not do anything, so uh, he wasn't able to finish the painting to send off. And time is running short, we need to get this painting done or else the uh, wealthy man in Milan may move on to another uh, suitor. So uh, the mother, uh, La Comtesse has now come up with a different plan. Instead, what she's going to do is to have a female painter come and uh, work under the guise of a uh, companion, kind of. Uh, the younger daughter likes to walk out by the cliffs where the older daughter uh, fell and died, so now that she has to go walk in with a companion. And uh, the companion is, in fact, this painter. And she's going to just walk with her and kind of take in different aspects of her and then go home and paint later and by that way try to piecemeal together a painting that can be sent off to him. Uh, but of course, as these things do, it didn't work out exactly as mom intended and the uh, painter ends up falling uh, in love, uh, some ways, uh, with the uh, subject of her painting and uh, she just falls for her her beauty, but not just her beauty, her way, her way of being, her, her life, her joie de vivre, eventually reveals that she's in fact a... a an artist and she's there to paint her. And uh, then we get into the second, not really the second act, but kind of the rest of the story. And you know, this movie is so complex, I can't really say what would be a spoiler and what would not. Uh, so instead, I'm gonna leave it to you. If you like this kind of film, you'll probably go out and see it anyway. I'm just gonna give my recommendation on it without giving away everything that happens. Uh, but you know, there's not a lot of movies that make me Feel things um, because um, uh, because I'm a highly functioning sociopath, um, narcissistic personality disorder. So hi. They're right about you. You're a bloody psychopath. High functioning sociopath with your number. But this movie definitely, I don't know, it just got to me. It, it's that it was so real the way that the relationship developed. And I think that that is what got to me. It was that I could relate so much to the way that Marianne slowly fell for Heloise. She's there to do a job and she's got her head on. She's got her game face on. She's ready. But then just the way that this person that you're supposed to be your subject, the way she looks at life and the way that, that she sees the world around her just starts to work in on you. And... You know, I can't say that for sure I've had that situation arrive. I mean, obviously, we've all had office or work romances before, and those things are always usually slow to develop. It's the kind of thing where you're friends first, and then you just find yourself wanting to spend more time with the person, and then you're thinking about them when they're not around, and then you have that moment where, ugh, crap, I am in love with this person, and I did not see that coming. And I think that because we've kind of thrown out the rules of cinema, and you know, where American cinema would say, I need you to get through that in five minutes so we can get to the rest of the story. That is not a story. The story is what happens after that. Because we've thrown those rules out, we're able to just slowly see this thing develop between the two of them, and there's a little deceit on both sides, and there's hiding, and there's hearts being guarded, and it's just, it's got depth, and it has romance, and it's so real. And the fact that it's in French, and it is in French, and it's subtitled, and it requires all of your attention, I think that makes it better. Because it doesn't allow you to get distracted. I couldn't sit there and write, or, you know, work on my website, or work on social media. I had to give my full attention to the movie, and that just drew me into the story even more. It made me identify with Marianne even further. It made me 
want a Halloween, even though I don't really want a Halloween. It made me want to be a Halloween, even though I don't want to be a Halloween. It just, it makes you, for that time period, be part of a story that you are not part of whatsoever. And I think that is the best, the best of cinema. That is really what we want in a movie. And yes, it's complex. It takes reading the subtitles. It takes kind of trying to apply the, not only the French rules, but the French rules plus being a period piece, which is already difficult of itself, and making yourself immersed in this world and trying to see how these characters are seeing the world around them and seeing each other. But once you do, you just, it's like jumping into a cold pool. You know, there are some people who say, you know, when you when a swimming pool is really cold, the best thing to do is just to jump in. And yes, you can you know, acclimate very quickly. You jump in, whoo, and it's a shock for a few minutes, but you get through it. I'm not a jump in person. I'm a work my way in from the steps kind of person where it's like, all right, ankles, knees, hips, chest, neck, head, all the way down. This movie is like acclimating to a pool that way because when you jump in and there's a lot of shock, I also feel like it, it doesn't last as long. Like once I have acclimated to a pool slowly, I could stay there all day. It doesn't matter because my body is working its way down to that level. If I jump in, I'm good for a few minutes, but eventually there's just too much shock to the system and I got to get out. This, you just work your way down in slowly and you acclimate. And once you're there, it's like home for you. And that's the world that has been built out on this little island in Brittany in the movie Portrait of a Lady on Fire. So I highly recommend it. But let's go through our steps again. Who is this movie for? If you don't like foreign films, not for you. If you don't like reading subtitles during a movie, it's not for you. If you don't like love stories, it's not for you. If you especially don't like same-sex love stories, it's not for you. Also, a little bit of a trigger warning. Uh, families do not take kindly to homosexual relationships. Uh, there is discussion of an unwanted pregnancy and steps taken to end that pregnancy. There is kind of arranged marriages and the way that women aren't in control of their own lives. All of these things. It is life in the late 18th century in a very Catholic country. So if any of those things might be triggering to you or you can imagine a situation that might arise, it's probably going to be in this and so you should, you know, t tread carefully. But otherwise, if this sounds like your cup of tea, I and you're probably still watching, you're the only ones who want to watch it, well, go and check it out. It is fully worth it. I, the only regret I have is that I watched it at home rather than going to the theater, but circumstances being what they are, that's all we can do. But it's 100% worth your time if it's the kind of movie you like. So take the time and go check out Portrait of a Lady on Fire. And I will say before I get out of here, I know I've been entering the episodes. This one I knew was going to be not for everybody, so I wanted to just kind of jump in. But to everyone stuck at home, again, hello and thank you for checking out. Thank you. I hope that this is just a few minutes of diversion from everything that's going on in the world around you. Uh, I hope that you are safe and I hope that you are healthy and I hope that you are well. Uh, if you are watching the videos on my channel just for the Everyman Movie Review, uh, I hope that you'll take the time to check out some of the other, other videos that I have. Uh, I have actually been experiencing some health problems myself and I have completely chronicled those in some of the other videos that are available so please take the time to check those out uh, but please stay home stay quarantined stay safe and stay healthy and uh, I'll see you next time well there you have it yet another episode of the everyman movie review in the books Right at the top here, I'd like to thank my patrons. I could not do this without you guys. You are a constant source of moral support and of course financial support to help me keep going. The great quality camera, the mics, the lights, everything. We have stepped up our game in 2020 and that is thanks in major part to you. If you aren't one of my patrons on Patreon and you'd like to be one of the chosen few, it's super easy. Go on over to patreon.com, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Robert N. Cheek, and for as little as a dollar a month, you can get early access to tons of material, behind the scenes action, and a lot of stuff that no one will ever see except for my patrons on Patreon. You're also going to be able to find a link down in the, the show notes. So check that out there. It's super easy. Next up, of course, I hope everyone is staying safe and staying well, staying healthy, no matter where you are in the world, in the United States specifically. I hope you are staying at home and staying in quarantine. It is unbelievably important. Please 
stay at home. And hey, I know it's boring. You're stuck inside. You're going stir crazy. Well, luckily, I have a ton of content for you over on my YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com forward slash Rob Cheek. You'll be able to check out videos not only of the Everyman Movie Review, but a ton of other stuff as well. I got parody videos where we sing songs inspired by Corona, but that are based on other songs. I've got my life videos. I went and got a Corona test. You can watch me do it and see how unscary it really is. You can check out all of those videos at youtube.com forward slash Rob Cheek. And you know what? Why not subscribe while you're there? Then you'll get a notification every time that I update and you won't miss out on any of the new content. And if you watch the YouTube videos regularly, make sure you're going over to anchor.fm forward slash everyman movie review. This show is available in podcast form. We don't always have time to sit down at a computer or at our phones and watch content, but you will almost always have time to listen. So if you don't have time in a week to check out the new episode, because we do have two coming every single week, go on over to anchor.fm forward slash everyman movie reviews and check out the podcast version of the show. It's just as good. You just can't see my face. And do you have a suggestion for a movie that I should do? I don't know. Did I miss the mark on a review? Well, it's super easy to let me know. Either go down into the comment section below any video and leave a comment. I try to reply to every single comment that's left or go to anchor.fm forward slash everyman movie review forward slash message and you can leave me a voicemail. You can send me a text. I can actually have it played on the show itself if you give me permission. It's easy, easy, easy to find me online. If you want to reach out to the show itself, all of the links are going to be down in the show notes, but we are available on Facebook. Instagram, and Twitter. And if you want to reach out to me personally, it's even easier. I'm available on all social media at Robert N. Chief. In fact, I just started a brand new group on Facebook where people can talk about everything that I'm working on, whether it's the personal vlog videos, the Everyman movie reviews, the parody songs, everything. So go on over to facebook.com and check out the RNC fan group and join today. And finally, if you can't get enough of me because, ugh, why would you? You could check out me and my buddy Corey every single Tuesday with a new episode of the O oh the Anthem podcast. It's available both in video and audio format at youtube.com forward slash O the Anthem and anchor.fm forward slash O the Anthem. That and tons of other content are also available at O the Anthem.com. Go there, check out our merch store. You can find out some of the shirts that we wear on the show. You can find old episodes, you can find the short films, you can find the web series, everything is available at otheanthem.com. I've told you before, I'm currently rebuilding the website. Well, that rebuild has started, it's underway, and now the brand new robertncheek.com is available. Go over to robertncheek.com and check it out. It's a work in progress, so hey, give me a little time. I'm building it myself. But You'll be able to find all my new stuff and be able to contact me, sign up for the email list, find my Patreon page, find Oh The Anthem and everything right there. It's going to be one place to find everything me on the web, robertncheek.com. So thank you for joining me for this week's episode. Make sure you check out. We have new episodes coming two per week, Sunday, Monday, and every Thursday, a brand new episode on YouTube and at on Anchor in podcast form. You're not going to want to miss any of these. I will be with you through every bit of of this quarantine period, so don't miss it. Stay home, stay quarantined, stay safe, and stay healthy. Take care of yourself and each other. Thank you, as always, and have a great week.